how do I figure out if the host in the environment are running some flavor of Nix, right? And that's usually SunRPC port 111. So for me, the fastest way to find Unix or Linux hosts in the environment is to scan for SSH or 111, right? Now, NFS mounts are kind of the Linux versions of Windows shared folders. You know how, like, on a Windows machine, you can share a folder and say, okay, I want to make this folder available to people. An NFS mount is an example of how you would do that in Linux. Now, if you were attacking Windows machines, if you're attacking Windows machines, what you want to go after is you want to go after Microsoft Directory Services, port 445. Um, can you get root from the NFS mount? Short answer, yes. Long answer, it's a lot of work. What you typically can find is exported directories. So if you have an exported directory, you may have information in a shared folder, right? We call that an NFS mount. And that shared folder may have really loose permissions on it that can allow you access to stuff you probably shouldn't have access to. Now, what do most people do? You data mine all those mount NFS mounts, those shared folders basically. And what you try to do is you try to see if any of those things contain critical data, specifically like password files. And then, yeah, you might be able to get something that from a particular NFS mount gives you access somewhere else. So short answer, yeah, that, that tends to be how uh, you go from an NFS mount. You find credentials or you find a really critical piece of information. Now, are there really extreme misconfigurations where you might have something called R services? And the answer is yeah. So with R services, you can have something like RCP, remote copy, and RSH, remote shell. So you may be in a situation where, where you can connect to a machine and because they have misconfigured R services, you can connect to a machine remotely without a password if you can impersonate the correct user or be coming from source IP address of an authenticated or an allowed host. Um, so RPC port 111 will be the first thing you look for. SSH would be the next thing that you look for. And then web stuff would be the next thing you look for after that. Like if I needed to like map down like my process in the LAN for attacking um, Linux machines, that would be how I do it. So the first thing I would go after is SunRPC because that would be how I data mine. Second thing I would go after would be SSH um, because you may be able to brute force um, SSH. And then the third thing I would go after would be the web servers. You know, maybe somebody has like a vulnerable version of Apache or a vulnerable version of Tomcat, something like that installed. Okay, if I'm attacking Windows, the very first thing that I would go after is the Sun RPC, Microsoft Directory Services, port 445. Okay, so here's an example, right? This is the Sun RPC, port 445. So you can see the hosts that are running port 445, and you're going to see that it's going to try to check uh, what's configured in the environment. So what we got going on here is you're trying to see can you get some sort of uh, information off of port 445. So on Windows hosts, Microsoft Directory Services 135, 139, and 445 are going to be the ports that tend to have the most information. 
right? They tend to have the most information. And that's going to really be what you're looking for, right? Okay, so... Okay, so here I'm ripping the network looking for port 80 and port 8080. Okay, so I found some machines that are running port 80. I'm going to go after... Fifteen. Let's see what we can get on this bad boy. Okay. So font HTTPD three point one. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to exploit DB. Okay. And there seems to be a couple of cases where the savant three point one is out there. Do you guys see that? So I looked for that, and it looks like we found one exploit that was actually written in Python. So, how do I do that? I'm going to grab all this down. Copy it. Okay. All right, so now that I'm in VI, I'm going to press I for insert mode. When I right-click, it allows me to paste. So shift colon, set number. So I got line numbers now. And now let's go through this code and let's see if it does what we think it does. Okay, first thing I want to do is I want to check my target port. Port 80 was running Savant 3.1. Okay, so let's change the IP address, 0 0.15, port 80. He does buffer to rock X, does a bind shell, it's encoded multiple times with she and I. And then it's stuck inside of here. So that's it. Let's take a look. This bad buffer. Rock X, Rock X is... his Egg Hunter. Did somebody else launch an exploit against it already? There we go. All right. All right, then how do we use Metasploit to attack the same thing? I won't go too much deeper into swapping out payloads, so I'll make that for another class. I thought I would do that today. But, oh well. So change that to 17, change the target port to 8080. And let's do this. And stager. Dun dun dun. Yeah.
should tell us that we're on a Zen platform because we are in Amazon AWS, baby, which is built on Zen. Let's have ourselves some fun. Drop it. Give us a nice little hash dump. What's the password that starts with uh, 4042B? Okay, better grab it. Did you guys see why I had such a tough time? Look at that freaking password, huh? is mine. <laughs> now a bunch of logs are being generated, so that's that. What is it? Oh, delete. Injection rocks. He's gone! <laughs> Alright, so created a local user account, added myself to the local group. That was fun. And what you can do is I can grab that password right there. I'll throw that joker right here. 17. Now, what I can do is I can background it, right, and now you can PS exec and just see if you can connect to the machine. Let's see if it works. Looking good in the hood. All right, well, that was a lot of fun. Able to pop on the box. Able to PS exec to the box. So what I'll probably do, most of you guys are doing okay with this.